Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we're going to discuss additive inverses of complex numbers. So in this topic, we will define the additive inverse of a com complex number, and we will determine how to calculate this inverse. Now, given a complex number z is equal to alpha plus beta j, the additive inverse negative z must be that number such that z plus its additive inverse is equal to zero. Thus, assume that negative z is equal to gamma plus delta j, so we have that alpha plus beta j plus gamma plus delta j is equal to zero plus zero j. That is, alpha plus gamma plus the sum beta plus delta times j must equal zero. Now, two complex numbers are equal if and only if both their real and imaginary components are equal, and thus alpha plus gamma is equal to zero and beta plus delta is equal to zero. Thus, gamma is equal to negative alpha and delta is equal to negative beta. So the additive inverse of z is negative alpha minus beta j. So for example, if z is equal to 0 0.7 minus 8.4j, then the additive inverse of z is negative 0 0.7 plus 8.4j. And we see that yes, if we add these two numbers together, we do get zero. Similarly, if w is equal to negative 9.6 plus 0.1j, then the additive inverse of w is 9.6 minus 0.1j. And again, we see adding w plus its additive inverse does indeed equal to zero. Going back to our geometric interpretation of complex numbers on the complex plane, the additive inverse of a complex number is the reflection of that complex number through zero. So here we see z is equal to alpha plus beta j. Its additive inverse must be on the other side at negative alpha minus beta j. If w is equal to gamma plus delta j, then its additive inverse must be negative gamma minus delta j. Theorem. The additive inverse is equal to the additive inverse of the multiplicative identity times z. That is, the additive inverse of z can always be found by multiplying z by negative 1. Proof. Let z is equal to alpha plus beta j. Therefore, it follows from our previous observation that the additive inverse is negative alpha minus beta j. But wait a second. Alpha is real, so negative alpha is just negative 1 times alpha. Negative beta is just negative 1 times beta. And now we can factor out a common factor of negative 1. So therefore, we have negative 1 times alpha plus beta j is equal to negative 1 times z. Note that we only use the properties of the fields in this proof. Consequently, in any field, we can always find the additive inverse of z by multiplying z by the additive inverse of the multiplicative identity 1. In this topic, we've introduced the additive inverse. Given z, we have found the additive inverse of z so that z plus its additive inverse is equal to zero. We saw the geometric interpretation as the reflection of the point z through zero. We also saw that we can find the additive inverse by multiplying z by the additive inverse of one, that is, multiplying by negative one. We, of course, will always refer to the additive inverse of z as minus z. Here are some references, acknowledgments, a colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!